Hello, this is a little bit more of a uh, kind of talking head slash talking hands kind of video. Uh, this is talking a little bit about um, Tucson Steel and how they're uh, kind of moving or changing that up a little bit here. Uh, I did pull out some that have uh, different steels here. Here's um, one in S90V. Here's uh, one in um, uh, S110V. This is the uh, 261. This is the 41 dash up. Uh, and here we go. There's the, uh, what, 381? Yeah, this is using uh, M390, which isn't going anywhere. Uh, we have the 380 here in 14C27, which is, or 14C28N, sorry, which is uh, mostly what we're going to be talking about here. And this is the, uh, what, 388. And this is uh, quite a new knife from Wong here in uh, D2. So, what I was uh, going to base this video on is um, for some newer models, uh, Tucson is moving away from 14C28N and back to D2. And uh, kind of the reason for that uh, being that uh, 14C28N scratches pretty darn easily. Um, it can scratch a little easily uh, in their factory as well as during shipping and... Um, and especially after you uh, get it and start using it. And uh, most of that has to do with the uh, satin finish on the blades. And they've gone around this a little bit uh, for quite a few models. Uh, like this one is um, sandblasted and then stonewashed. But they, they have a lot of uh, stonewashed finished 14C28N as well. Uh, here's the thing though. Stonewashing takes time. And time takes money. Uh, it takes a lot longer to uh, get a nice uniform stone wash uh, out of a blade, uh, especially a finished and hardened, uh, hardened blade, than uh, than it does to uh, just rub it against a uh, a particular uh, belt to get that nice satin look to it, like uh, a lot of their other ones do. So that's kind of the the reason why they're moving away from that. Uh, now we can see that in some of the uh, the brand new ones, like this. Um, TS388 here, that's uh, brand new and in D2. And uh, they've uh, some button locks that they're uh, just recently coming out with are in D2 as well. And now that I think about it, there's also been some of them, like uh, this one, the TS301 lockdown. I have it in 14C28 in steel. It came with a satin blade. Uh, I've stonewashed it after the fact. And... Um, these knives are now exclusively made out of D2. They're not using 14C28N at all on these anymore because they don't want to take the um, the expense, uh, the extra expense of doing the uh, stone washing on them. Which, uh, you know, is kind of unfortunate because I do like uh, how stone washing uh, looks on a lot of blades. Uh, I mean, I can still do it after the fact, but uh, hey, I do definitely like them from the factory like that if, uh, if it's at all possible. So... Um, yeah, uh, so I guess I could talk a little bit about 14C28 and steel since, um, I don't know, it might be information for some people, but uh, 14C28N is a modification or uh, kind of a uh, an evolution of 12C27. Uh, a lot of people are uh, pretty familiar with that steel. Uh, let's see, some of the uh, CGRB Rias are using uh, 12C27. Um the ones that aren't using RPM 9 steel, that is. Uh, and, well, there's, there's quite a few others. Uh, Morkneev, if they, uh, if they're using the, um, uh, the stainless or Inox, uh, blades, then that's a, uh, a, a 12C27. And also the open L's, uh, using the stainless are also using a 12C27. Uh, that steel was designed for razor blades. So it was designed for cutlery, but not for pocket knives. Uh, you know, it was designed for like those uh, five blade cartridge kind of things. Um, and uh, I mean, it's uh, it's quite a nice uh, tough steel, but that was basically what it was designed for. Um, and it, it works out all right for a, a steel, but um, they did want to improve things a little bit. And they worked with uh, some companies, and I believe J.A. Hinkles, or Zwilling J.A. Hinkles, uh, you know, the German manufacturer uh, of uh, a lot of kitchen knives, uh, worked with them. And they came up with uh, 13C26, 
which was, you know, helped with the, uh, the, uh, the edge retention, uh, gets it a little bit higher than, uh, 12 C 27. And, uh, you know, that would seem to be all right. But, um, you know, the give and take of that was, uh, the corrosion resistance wasn't really up to what it was with, uh, 12 C 27. Um, and Kershaw decided that they liked that steel, but wanted to work with them to, uh, kind of modify it even more. And that is where 14C28N came from. It's a little bit of an upgrade over 13C26. A little bit more carbon in there. Uh, a little bit more chromium, I think, to uh, help with the, uh, the stainless nature of it. And uh, they added nitrogen into the process there to uh, help a little bit with um, some other things. I guess also helping with the um, the uh, the particular oxide layers that that end up forming the uh, the uh, the stainless nature of uh, some steels and things like that. So yeah, it's basically um, uh, the company that uh, Sandvik. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, that that have made uh, 12C27 that uh, also transitioned it to uh, 13C26 with some outside intervention. And then Kershaw, again, with outside intervention, created 14C28N. And it's a great steel, but yeah, it, uh, it does have a problem of uh, surface scratching. Um, and it, it does have some uh, other great properties to it. It's uh, relatively tough for a stainless steel, so um, using it for a uh, kind of some... Uh, mid to larger sized fixed blades works out pretty darn good but if you do have them uh, polished or um, uh, or satin finish then uh, yeah you're going to end up with some problems there when it comes to um, scratching especially if you're uh, in a factory setting and things like that so yep uh, Tucson is um, trying to move a lot away from it obviously they're still manufacturing a lot of knives with it um, and I don't think that's going to change. I don't think they're going to completely remove it from the picture altogether. But, like I said, there are some uh, newer knives that are coming out. And they're just deciding straight up, we're going to use D2 for this. Uh, why? Because it um, works out quite the same uh, as far as uh, edge retention uh, capabilities between... Um, well, at least uh, from my experience so far, 14C28N and D2 uh, both um, are uh, fairly interchangeable as far as um, uh, um, edge retention goes. D2 wins out just a little bit, but hey, it's you know not quite as stainless. Doesn't bother me in uh, this dry area of Colorado that I'm in, but um, yeah, maybe on the uh, the uh, the coastal regions it might be just a little bit worse, but. Uh, yeah, so I just kind of wanted to talk about that. Uh, what are your feelings on that? Uh, for me, doesn't necessarily bother me all that much uh, for them moving back to D2. Um, my mind kind of makes me want to see what they would do with some other types of steel. Um, instead of using a 14C28N, uh, it would be neat to... Well, Nitro V is kind of out of the picture because they're from such a small manufacturer here on the uh in new jersey uh but like aebl uh that it's based on that would be kind of an interesting steal uh they could also go the uh the kaiser route and adopt uh, 154 cm and that would be pretty fantastic but i can kind of understand why they're backing away from that a little bit because well it's another uh american-made steel from crucible which yes they also um are purchasing for um, S90 and S110V uh, because that's the manufacturer of it, but they have higher and higher uh, import costs, especially due to the uh, the last presidential uh, administration uh, putting a lot more tariffs and things like that that are affecting uh, imports and exports from uh, that side of the country there. So that's kind of um, a little bit less on uh, their preferred scale, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it, they, there's other choices out there, too. There's N690 um, that, uh, well, they're already getting a lot of uh, M390 from uh, Bowler. So they could uh, probably do that. And that's, for the most part, why they are um, why they use uh, M390 rather than 20CV. is um, I mean, it's basically the same steel, but, um, 
you know, Bowler is uh, based in Austria, and they don't have the same um, import and export tariffs that uh, we do here in the States now. So it's uh, much more affordable for them to get basically the same steel just uh, that way. And that and M390 is um, the more well-known uh, name for it. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I was just kind of rambling around. Uh, what are your thoughts on there? Uh, would you prefer them to uh, move to a different stainless steel or something like that? Or are you happy enough with um, them kind of moving back to D2 for their, um, I would say their mid-range? Because uh, they're they're definitely not going to get rid of their M390 anytime soon for their, um, for their more expensive models. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just curious on uh, kind of what anybody else uh, has to uh, say about any of that. For me, doesn't necessarily bother me all that much uh, because of the uh, scratching problems that we have with uh, 14C28N. But uh, on the other side of the coin, uh, I also understand that D2 is now very much viewed as a um, as a uh, budget steel. You know, um, that's where you get all the uh, the the Gonzos and the uh, the other, I don't know, 40 or $50 D2 flippers uh, in G10 and stuff like that. So uh, do you still kind of um, consider it to be uh, much more on a, a lower, very, very cheap end steel sort of thing? Or uh, or what? Yeah, I'm just kind of curious what uh, everybody else thinks. So, uh, all right. Yep, this was just a uh, quick, short little thing. So uh, I'll just uh, leave it at that. Uh, as always, I appreciate y'all for uh, watching or at least listening in this particular case because there wasn't a whole lot of visual stimulation going on. And uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, yo.